God or just give up the whole idea of, of living righteously for God? Is there something in your life that is shaking you down? I want to help you rise above that tonight and fight for your faith. Fight for your faith in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and then get to this place of conviction. None of these things move me. None of these things move me. Is there anything that is trying to take your conviction of, of Christ out of you? Trying to take out that desire in you to serve and walk with the Lord? Is there anything? What is it? Can you identify it? I want to help you tonight to get over these things. Get your mind off of yourself and off of your problem and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It will put you in touch with Him knowing that God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted or tried above what you're able to bear, but with every temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear because God is faithful. Amen. He said, none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself. These are principles that He lived by. When you came to the Lord, did you not say to him, Lord, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to love you and serve you the rest of my life. Is that, was that your commitment to Christ as it was mine? Was that your commitment? It was mine. Or should we have said, well, I'm going to serve you, Lord, and commit my life to you until I have a serious problem. Then I'm going to doubt you. That's not what we said. We said, Lord, when I come, when you come to Lord, Lord, I want to love you, I want to serve you, I want to walk with you, I want to commit my life to you from hell or high water. Regardless of what comes my way, Jesus will always be first. Lord, I will do what you ask me to do. I will go where you ask me to go. And I will say what you ask me to say. I will do your bidding, Lord. And then if it starts costing us, we start doubting our commitment and our faith. Paul says, nor do, none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself. Let's go back to Revelation. What did they say again? They overcame by three things. What was it? They, they, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Everybody say blood of the Lamb. Blood the, Lamb. the second thing was the word of the testimony. Uh-huh. That's how they overcame. You know what Satan is trying to do in your life and mine? Is to take your testimony away from you. He's trying to have you doubt your testimony. He's trying to shut you up from your testimony. He said, I don't count my life dear to me. If it costs my life, it costs my life. And so why is it, he says here, so that I may finish my race with joy. That I may finish my race or finish my course. Everybody look up here for a second. When you came to Jesus, Jesus set you on a course. He has set you on a purpose. At all costs, you've got to keep the course. Stay on course. Stay on purpose. And stay in the race. Are you getting that? How many has ever been to a little putt putt? You know a little putt putt? You don't go from hole number one to hole 15. You've got to stay the course. <clears throat> stay the course. When I was able to, I'd go out sometimes go on the big boy golf courses. <laughs> and because some guys behind us were a little bit better than we were, <laughs> I said, oh, shut up. This is my course, and I'll do it in my course, in my time. I'll be as courteous as I possibly can, but don't push me. How many know that in golf, you can't be pushed? If you're pushed, that ball's going to go everywhere but the right way. Amen. you gotta, you got you to be quiet, and so on and so forth. God has put you on a race. He's put you on a course for your life. And let me tell you, He wants us to finish the race with joy. He doesn't want us to finish the race with the money grubs. Do I have to go to church this morning? Do I have to worship God? 
Do I have to sing? Do I have to give my tithe? Oh, no. Do I have to shake hands? Do I have to worship? Do I have to hug somebody's neck? Do I have to go to church? My God. People should be breaking the door down to get into the church. Amen. That I may finish my race with joy and the ministry. If you do not believe that you have been brought into the kingdom with the ministry and for a ministry, then you need to be well advised tonight that that is the case. Everybody has a ministry. Everybody has a calling. Everybody has a race. Everybody has a course. Nobody has been brought into the kingdom of God to be aimless, purposeless, but to live as we put in our bulletin on purpose which I received from the Lord to testify to the gospel and of the grace of God. Let me give you a couple of other scriptures. I think you want to enjoy. Look at, let's look at Proverbs 24.10. Proverbs 24.10. Look at it. Everybody, everybody read together now. If you faint, that's three of us. All together, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. The Bible tells us, the Apostle Paul tells us, do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we will reap if you faint not. The word faint is to be translated if you don't give up. He's not talking about fainting or falling to the ground. Fainting here is a term used in terms of giving up. He said, if you faint or give up in the face of adversity, then your strength is small. I tell you what, I have too much personal dignity. <laughs> Can I be honest with you here? I have too much personal dignity to give up in the face of adversity. Is there anybody in this room that would enjoy being called a chick? You didn't hear the question. You would enjoy being called a chick? No, you wouldn't. Nobody, no one would enjoy being called a chick. Nor is anybody would enjoy being called a person that abandons the ship. It's Gordon, what are we doing? Is that the kind of person you want in the foxhole with you when you're facing? No, sir. You want people of stature. You want people of commitment. You want people that will fight with you and for you. Not fight against you, fight with you and for you. If you faint or if you give up, on the day of adversity, then your strength is small. It's weak. It is feeble. And I'll tell you what, I, a couple of years ago, Stephen and I went through some stuff, and some, some heavy stuff and some deep water Stephen and I went through a couple of years ago. And it could have been very, very easy for us to throw in the towel. But I'll tell you, for the stock that we're made of. That's <laughs> definitely the stock we're made of. It's not part of the Bellic repertoire. Amen. Give up. I don't care for as big as you. <laughs> and you're a linebacker size, so it? If I'm going down, I'm going down fighting. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> You'll have a few bruises on the way out too. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, you don't give up. You do not give up. Amen. In the day of adversity, what are you facing now that's adverse in your life? Let me give you another scripture out of Isaiah. You want to enjoy this as well. I hope you're keeping these scriptures. Isaiah chapter 7. Let's look at verse 9. The head of Ephraim 
in Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Romania's son. If you will not believe, surely you will not be established. Did you hear that? If you're not going to believe, you're not going to be established. Your faith requires that you be established. Look at the next verse, 10. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, again to Ahaz, saying, verse 11, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God, asking whether the depth of the height of above, verse 12. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Verse 13. Then he said, Hear now, O house of David, it is, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary God also? Verse 14, very important. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Watch now. This is for us today, in this age. The Lord will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. Why is that important? Why is that important that we have God with us? Because what have we been talking about here tonight in terms of our testimony, in terms of our adversity, in terms of our course, in terms of our race, we must always, always count on Emmanuel. Because God promises to participate. Everybody say participate. participate. How many glad God's on your side? Amen. Thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Meaning God with us. And the reason that Isaiah was talking to Ahaz like this, God was very angry. <laughs> that you tried to make a treaty with the king of Syria to come against Israel because you were scared of them. And Isaiah said to Ahaz, what is your problem? Why can't you call on your God? It's been done in the past. King David, Solomon, the rest of them, all of the great kings of Judah, they all called on the name of the Lord their God. And in their worst of condition, they were able to win every battle that they faced. And Isaiah repeated the over and over again, don't worry of what they threat. Don't worry about anything. God will fight the battle for you. And he says here, Call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Why is that important to us? It's important to us is because we don't, when we're facing adversity, we don't have to look to the left nor to the right nor to the arm of flesh nor to the horses or the chariots but we must trust in the name of the Lord our God. His name is Emmanuel because God has chosen to participate in the battle when you're facing somebody. Shout amen. Hallelujah. He is there by your side to fight with you and for you. That's the way it is. It'd be different if I was standing here, Pastor Stephen was standing here, and we had not gone through some hardships. It'd be different if we were not tried. It'd be different if we had not gone through those times. To where 23 years, 22 years ago, when I went through my situation, and, and other people, I'm not just me, I'm not just, I'm not the only one, I'm not at all. I'm just saying. See, what happens when we face adversity sometimes? We lose sight of the goal. We lose sight of the objective. The reward is there. The recompense is there if we thank God, if we don't give up. If we don't give up. And so tonight, if Paul was sending Timothy here to check our faith, to see how our faith is. What would be his report back to the Apostle Paul? Strong as ever. Strong as ever. <laughs> would he be able to say that your faith is strong and that your love for the Lord and this church is strong as well? I believe that would be his testimony to the Apostle Paul. I believe 
that would be an encouragement to the Apostle Paul. I don't think Paul had an idea of what his gospel of revelations that he got going into the third heaven to receive all that he received from the Lord in the spirit, things that he saw that he could not utter in human language. Nor did he have permission to. But if he, even if he had permission, there was not a known tongue in the human sphere to be able to express and to define what he saw. It's, it's beyond expression. It's beyond description what he saw. And that's waiting for us. The riches of his glory is beyond description. In the day of the mercy, remember his name is Emmanuel. God bless And that's not just a fantasy. That's a nice thing to say. Amen. That is the truth. And we call him Emmanuel, God with us. It means that he is ever there, willing and ready to participate in any battle or struggle that we have in order to give us the complete victory. Amen. 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 God is good. And I'm excited about my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm ready to be And I'm excited about you. God is good. So I want to have a prayer with you tonight. I want to pray with those watching by YouTube and those listening by CD that if your faith is at a challenge right now, if your faith is at a challenge, <clears throat> God will give you strength where you feel weak to establish you in your faith and to encourage you. I pray that that will be your portion tonight. Let's pray, pray together with our heads before you. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for the riches of your grace. Thank you, Lord God, tonight that we can say we know in whom we believed and we're persuaded. Thank God for persuasion. Thank God for conviction. Thank God for surety in our hearts. We know, we know the owner shall it out. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness toward us, your goodness. And we thank you, God, for your faithfulness. <clears throat> and Father, we have friends here tonight. We have friends watching by YouTube and listening by CD who perhaps their faith is being challenged right now. Their life <clears throat> is disrupted by all types of different activities that war against their faith and their commitment to Christ and their quietness of heart. But Lord, your promise is that you would give peace above all things to rule in our hearts. Father, those circumstances that arise that are beyond our control, in the name of Jesus, we commit them to you and help us to see Emmanuel. Help us to see Emmanuel tonight. God with us. As the Lord himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be with you, even to the ends of the earth. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, that one who seems to feel the weakest or the most, or the most challenged tonight in their faith and their walk with you, Lord, we pray. Give them strength even now. Establish their faith, Lord. Make it firm tonight. Bring them a confidence, we pray, by your grace. And let them have a great balance of this week, Lord, as we come back on Sunday to worship you fresh and new. Lord Jesus, we pray for those watching by YouTube and listening by CD. There's a minister, a preacher, that just watching this, this teaching tonight. Father, that if they're facing challenges, odds that are greater, bigger than what they are, bigger than what they can personally confront, Father, we pray that God will arise and His enemies be scattered. Let them commit their way into the Lord and trust in Him and He will bring it to pass. May everyone, Father, within the sound of my voice, sense the sweet embrace of God's grace and His all-sufficiency, 
in the name of Jesus. Heal what needs to be healed. Lift those hearts and may we have full restoration of joy as we serve you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. Good Lord. Good Lord. Good Lord. Good Lord. Good Lord. Good Lord. Good Lord.